Hello and welcome to the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company podcast. My name is Emma and I am the owner and dyer of Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company. I naturally dye yarns, yarns from Ireland, yarns from Northern Ireland, yarns from Great Britain and uh, yeah, it's uh, that's what I do. <laughs> welcome. I have got a lot of nice autumnal projects, finished objects, works in progress to show you. I've got the fire on here to make it extra cosy. Hopefully it goes. And this is only the second time I've had it on this autumn, I think. So hopefully we'll get a wee bit of heat off it soon. The weather here in Northern Ireland is very, very wet. It's been very, very wet all summer. It continues to be wet into the autumn. I was hoping for some crisp autumn days, but alas, they haven't uh, they haven't come yet. So I am going to start with finished objects. The first one is the one I'm wearing. This is the Levitate Wrap by My Favourite Things Knitwear. I knitted this in one of my own yarns that's undyed. It's Jacob, Chivia and Hebridean. It's a double knit and weight yarn. I didn't use any mohair with this. And I think this was a whip in the last episode, in the last podcast episode. And I was able to get gauge. I actually had to go down a needle size from five to four millimeter needles on the main fabric. And I really, really enjoyed knitting this. It has this lovely little bow here. And I put a snap fastening in here just to hold it. I actually just used a really small one, which is nice because it's it works it works quite well with the the fabric. It's not too big, you know, it's easy to get off and on. Um, this is a lovely pattern to knit. I really, really enjoyed the construction and the double knitting. There's a lot of double knitting. You can see here, this is all double knitting and it continues into the ribbons for the bow. I really, really enjoy uh, double knitting. It's basically like knitting a kind of an I-cord and attaching it onto the stitches while you knit. Really nice, I can highly recommend. Not everyone will like it, but I really enjoyed it. And the undyed gray color is just lovely, I think. And it's a super cozy yarn, it's wool and spun. So I knitted it at quite a loose gauge. You can kind of see, you can kind of see that. Um, and yeah, really, really like the pattern, would really recommend. Um, I made a modification to the sleeves. In the pattern, the sleeves are supposed to be tapered. Um, I seen on someone else's Ravelry that they had done a kind of a balloon sleeve. So I followed their instructions. I'll put a picture here of how the pattern should look and then a picture of my inspiration. Um, so you can follow their instructions if you want to. And I didn't, I did a few decreases, not very many. I decreased rapidly here and then um, I went down to, I think a three or a two millimeter needle for the cuff. And then I did a tubular bind off, which I love. Just, it looks so slick and beautiful and just, it's one of the joys of life. <laughs> so yeah, I have some of this yarn in the shop if you're interested. Um, so this was my first finished object. Um, and yeah, I can, s this, I've worn this now with so many things. I've worn it with skirts, I've worn it with, I've worn it with long skirts, short skirts, tight skirts, loose, loose skirts, baggy trousers, tight trousers, and you know what? It looks good with them all. So I am going to a wedding at the end of October and I'm planning to wear this. Um, it's an end of October wedding. So I'm going to wear this over a jumpsuit, a red jumpsuit that I have, and I think it'll look really well. I was originally planning to knit um, something else. Maybe some of you will remember that I started a single strand of mohair um, kind of made up pattern jumper, but I might not continue that. I think I will. 
I might pick it up like next year maybe um, coming into the summer or something like that so that's just been set um, to the side for the moment because I have other things that I'm really interested to knit. So I'm just looking at my little book here, maybe some of you will have seen this before. This is definitely inspired by Nitty Nighty, who, kept, uh, who keeps a knitting journal. So I started doing that because last year, I had no idea how much I knit that year, what I knitted, what I finished, how many skeins I got. And I was just really interested in this kind of, the data of my knitting. Um, so I record started objects, finished objects, yarn in, yarn out and dream projects. So the next finished object was my baby starlet mittens. I don't have them with me, but I'm going to put a video here. This pattern was by, I'm going to put it down here because I haven't written it down. <laughs> um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, so you can check that out if you want. Um, I used some of my old limited edition Chivia that I had previously dyed. This was a gift for a, actually it was a gift for my dad to give to someone. Um, he originally wanted a blanket, but I knew I wouldn't have enough time to do that. So I looked for something kind of interesting and small and beautiful. And I found this pattern. It's a two color color work and um, has this beautiful star motif in the middle. In the pattern, it doesn't say anything about attaching the mittens with an eye cord or doing the, the little eye cord to cinch in the wrist. So that was added by me <laughs> because I thought I don't want these to go missing. So you can, with the eye cord um, attaching them, it means you can stuff them down the arms of a coat and just leave it there. And if a, a hand falls out, no problem. And then I thought the little um, eye cord cinching in at the wrist would be helpful um, at the start when the baby's hands are really tiny. And then later on, as they get bigger, you can just take that off. Um, but I thought it was a really cute modification. So I basically knitted uh, an eye cord for both of them. Um, they're the same width. I think I did a two stitch eye cord. Yeah. Um, and to do the mittens and the modifications, my modifications, <laughs> um, it took, I think, three nights. So probably about I would say between six and nine hours work. So I thought that was a lovely little project. Really pleased with that. I think I used the recommended needle size, although I did forget to size up for the color work, which I should have done, but it turned out fine, so it was okay. I do generally knit my color work quite loose, but these are quite a small circumference, so perhaps they were knitted on magic loop. Per perhaps I should have went up that needle size, but. I was in it. I remember I was in a bit of a pickle because my needles, I, my needles at the moment are in a lot of projects and I couldn't find the one that I was looking for. And I thought, oh, I'll just continue with what I'm working on. So I'm going to put another stick in here. Is the fire going to go? Who knows? <laughs> Might have to take a break in the middle to tend to the fire. So my next finished object is another thing that I don't currently have. It's a jumper I knitted for my daughter. It's called the G Baby Garter Stitch Jumper and it's a pattern by Kat and Lenny. I was using up scraps for this project. I think I knitted the two-year-old size and I think I did a chief gauge or maybe I just didn't check, possibly. This was a really nice little pattern. I started knitting it last year I think. <laughs> I think I started it last autumn and I picked it up again at the end of August I think and I was using a combination of um, Hello Stella's Carmo um, in her shag rug colourway. A little bit of a long Avic Anna's mohair. Both of these I used in um, a vest pattern I think it was by My Favourite Things Knitwear too. And um, I just wanted to use up these beautiful colours. And then I also use um, a yarn that I was testing out for the shop. Um, I tested it out years ago and decided not to use it. Um, so 
every so often I have these random skeins that I need to use up so I held it double and that kind of created the right gauge overall so it was kind of like a double knitting to iron weight I would say. I'm getting very loose with my gauge these days um <laughs> I'll talk maybe about that later but yeah so that basically worked really well um so the point that uh, it was all going very well at the start and then I got stuck on this I got stuck on sleeve island like that never happens to me but I, I did with this because it was quite dense the fabric and it was basically just garter stitch so I had other more interesting things to knit on so it got left to the side um and then when I picked it up I was like why did I not finish this this is so nice so I will put a picture here maybe I've already put a picture here and yeah I was worried that it wasn't going to fit I actually knitted the neck band or attached the neck band a couple of times the first time I just did, did I do a regular bind off and whip stitch it down? Yes, that's what I did. And then I realized that it wasn't going to fit. I tried it on, it was too tight, the neck band couldn't get it over her head. So I had to rip that out. And then I looked up how to do a super stretchy bind off. Then I whip stitched that down loosely <laughs> and it fits perfect. And actually now it's stretched out. A reasonable amount and it does send the pattern to put elastic in so I might have to do that but I'm really glad that it fits and it's probably going to fit her next um, autumn winter as well so I'm very pleased about that. Next finished object was another one that um, got put by the wayside for a little while but it is this hat. Ah! This just screams like um Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'll tell you about it first and then I'll tell you what it screams. This is the Stockholm hat by Petite Knit and the yarn is Marina Skew's Mend It 4 Ply in the Or. I think it's the Or colorway. There we go. And um, I just finished this recently and Marina said um, this has definite Steve Sisu vibes. I definitely think it has vibes of the tomato soup core that High Fibre Knits is like a champion in. <laughs> so um, really pleased with how this turned out. You can see the decreases there. I have a few stories about this. So I the, get the original yarn for this is a DK weight yarn. I could not get a gauge with a DK weight yarn. I'm a very loose knitter, but this was quite extreme. So I not only had to change yarn, I also had to change down several needle sizes to get the correct gauge, which is kind of mad. Now, this is a woolen spun yarn. Um, I think originally in the pattern that Petite Knit uses, um, she uses a worsted spun yarn, which is sleeker um so definitely the gauge on that would be different than on a woolen spun yarn which is airier and definitely takes up more space when you're knitting with it the fire's going out i'm going to take a quick break two seconds so that was my kind of gauge problems with this pattern um and what else can i tell you about it it was knit it was knit on a smaller circumference um, circular needle and I do have a bit of a ladder at the start I'm not sure it kind of does continue I'm not this is the start of the row here this bothers me this really bothers me so I just put that to the back I also noticed um, after this is a central double decrease and I noticed after I um, After I um, had finished the hat, there was definitely some holes on one side of the decreases. So I just sewed those up with a little piece of the yarn. And actually the yarn, I was able to knit this in 50 grams of Marina Skew's um, four ply. So that's amazing. I did block out quite aggressively. I do have a little bit left, but I blocked out quite aggressively long ways. 
and I am going to insert a little piece of elastic at some point because my hair just makes hats go like like that shape <laughs> basically so I think it's a really cool hat and I'm going to knit a matching one or you'll hear about this here but I plan on knitting a matching one for my daughter there's no pattern for it but it's so easy that I'll just make it up and I have to say it was kind of boring it was a little bit boring <laughs> which is why this languished for so long until I hit the decreases I was just like I don't know how much longer I can knit and rib it's 27 centimeters in one by one rib I was just like not very interested in knitting that <laughs> but I really wanted the finished object so there's the matches that's not very aesthetically pleasing is it so that's the story about this hat I think I didn't actually record in my book I was uh, I forgot to record in my book when I cast this on but I am imagining it was before the summer like late spring so this has been a whip for a while and it definitely sat by the wayside so overall I would say I really enjoy the finished object I really like the yarn didn't love the pattern but yeah I like the look of it and if you don't know who Steve Sisu is I'll I'm going to put a little picture here and you can all laugh <laughs> um so that is all of my finished objects now works in progress I have quite a few things to show you and a lot of ideas for things that are going to come soon so the first one is I have been, this is a Harriet Wildwood Stitches bag. Seems to be going now. Will it go if I close it? Um, I think we had these in the shop a little while ago. Or am I dreaming? Yes, I had these in the shop. They're not in the shop any longer, but um, Harriet always has nice things in her shop. So my work in progress, sorry, back to my work in progress is these thick socks if you watch my last vlog you will have seen them this is i'm not using any pattern for this i'm just making it up um if you have watched my five tips for knitting no nylon socks you will know that i don't really use a sock pattern um and i'm getting really into thick socks I realised that the socks that I gravitate towards the most are the ones that I hold the strands double just because it's very cold here in the winter and they go well below boots and Birkenstocks and that's what I wear most of the time. I would like to add a pair of cosy slippers to my wardrobe. I don't know if they'll fit in those but so this is my hearth sock held double. This is the Emerald Meadowfall colorway and it's a three by one rib. I cast on 44 stitches on a 2.75 millimeter needle. I did a heel flap and gusset. I then knit the foot um, I actually decreased an extra four stitches by mistake, but it's fine, it still fits. Maybe a little bit snugger than I would like. <laughs> and then I knit the toe. So again, if you've watched the no nylon sock video, um, you'll know that you have to knit no nylon socks a bit longer just to account for the felting, which will probably occur. So that's what I did and with DK weight yarn I actually knitted this toe four times because I didn't write down my recipe the last time and I forgot that your because your yarn is thicker your ratio of decreasing happens basically you have a smaller toe I don't know how to explain it but you have a shorter toe so I had to go back and re-knit some of the foot make it a bit longer so that when I started knitting the toe the you know, the foot, my, my big toe was here and then I started knitting the toe. So when this felts, this will fit my foot perfectly. I don't know if it's the same for everyone. You have to leave one and a half to two centimetres 
when you're knitting with no nylon and sock yarn some people's feet sweat some people's don't so mine really really do and this felts the sock which does actually make it stronger so I am not against the felting at all it's kind of my friend and but yeah I I didn't check the gauge on these I should have but I knew when I was knitting it that it felt tight like it looks tight this is basically a DK weight sock probably more like iron weight but I'm knitting it on a 2.75 millimeter needle and I seen actually that Albina has just released a pattern for thick socks so I'm going to put a link or a picture or something of it here so you can check that out but if you're looking for a pattern that might be a good one to check out I'll tell you about this actually this is um basically this would be the equivalent to knitting that um with one of my double sock sets I call them here's one that's coming tonight in the shop update so I do a main skein and then two mini skeins because then that means you can hold it double and hopefully get a pair of socks out of it so what I do is I kick up the yarn and take a strand from the inside and a strand from the outside and then my two mini skeins I just do the same thing so I'm definitely going to have more than enough this is I've finished both heels this is actually what I have left so I'll have a wee bit of scraps left um, that I can use in a scrappy sock. Um, and this just means you can get a DK weight sock out of 140 grams, um, possibly with a little bit left over like me. Um, but I'd say, I think most people could get a pair of socks out of this if you're holding it double. If you're holding it single, you could possibly even get two pairs or one super, super like knee length pair, like one really long pair. So this is actually called, this sock set is called the Wood Splitters Supper. Or I think I meant to call it the Wood Cutters su Supper. And I was having vibes of like an autumn dusk and you're out chopping wood, you're finished chopping your wood, you sit down on the stump with a cup of tea and watch the sunset. That is what I was kind of vibing with this. <laughs> so this will actually be in tonight's show update. So if you'd like to try knitting a thick pair of socks with me, um, you definitely can. I also have some, I'm kind of jumping from whips to shop stuff, but hopefully that's okay. I have a couple more double sock sets, but on my natural sock base. And um, this is on dusk. And this is on haze. So I have those as well that you can hold double. This has slightly more meterage. This is in total 560 meters. The horse sock is 462. So it is slightly thicker and this is slightly finer. Both are really good for holding double or single for socks or shawls or really anything, to be honest. The main colour, this green colour, I won't have these exact, I won't have this as a sock set in the shop, but I might do it next month or in the middle of next month. This main colour will be available as single skeins though. It's called Emerald Meadow Vault. I think I've maybe said that. This is Mulberry and this is Cognac. So you could probably just make up some kind of similar from um, the shop. Is this fire going to go? I think it is. I do have mini skein sets, loads of other double sock sets that you can check out. So that is, that is one of my works in progress. One that I'm very much enjoying. I have not knitted a sock in quite some time. I just go through phases of socks. Sometimes I love them and sometimes I just could not be bothered with them. Um, but I think saying is when you're holding it double, it goes so fast. It's very satisfying. And I was saying to my husband, I finished one sock and I wore it for a day. The whole day, my right foot was so much warmer than my left foot. I was wearing tights and then the sock on top of the tights. And it was so lovely to walk around with one warm foot. So I can't wait to go around with two warm feet, hopefully this weekend. All right, next work in progress. Let's talk about the shawl that I found when I was cleaning out my... Um, knitting pantry slash whip area. This is in a little Alex Collins bag. Um, so this is one of my limited edition yarns. I was clear, I was clearing out my whip area. Still had the correct needles in it. And I was like, ooh, 
I think I know someone who would really like this for a Christmas present. Again, this was another limited edition yarn from the shop. I think it was blue textile. It might have been just blue textile on its own. I can't remember now. I've only got this much left, but I think that should be fine. It feels like about 30 to 40 grams, I would say. I think I was maybe planning on trying to do a pattern from this, but I don't think I'm going to do that now. Well, maybe I will. Who knows? Um, I don't know how many stitches are on the needle. So the yarn has a really nice texture. It's wool and spun. I don't have any left now, sorry. Um, really nice colour, quite, well, a lot bluer than my current limited edition and slightly darker. But my idea for how to finish this off was basically, like it's at the point now where I can do, I could do like some kind of a bind off. So I had a couple of ideas. I thought I could either do, oh, did I just put it out? I could either do corrugated ribbing. If you don't know what that is, I have an example here where it's like two colors and the one color you purl and one color you knit. And I'm going to give this to my sister-in-law for Christmas. She really, really likes it, um, but I haven't decided totally on the finish yet. She likes things that are aesthetically quite like minimal um, and quite like simple details, I would say. So this could be one option for finishing it, but I think the option that I'm going to go for in my head, I don't know if this is going to work, but this is my idea. So I'm going to work the last 10 to 15 rows, I would say, in a combination of knit and purl. So some of it is garter stitch and some of it is stockinette stitch, kind of like that, but I want it to look like little squares of different sizes or rectangles to give just a little flourish to the last section of this shawl. I think that would be really cool, although the problem here is I might run out of yarn. So I could either do it in a different colour, but I think she would prefer one colour. So I might weigh this, see how much I have. It's actually, it's probably more like 20 grams. Oh no, maybe it's 30 grams. I have enough for some kind of bind off, but I don't know what. I don't think she'd be really into like lace. So I don't think I would do an applied lace type border. Um, I could do, oh, I don't know what to do now. I'm changing my mind. If you have any suggestions in the comments, let me know. But I'm thinking some sort of combination of knit and pearls, possibly with the extra colour, making it, making it more like cor corrugated ribbing. But I could experiment with the corrugated ribbing and make either the knits or the pearls bigger or smaller. Um, I could do like three pearl in one colour and one knit in one colour or something like that. I don't know. And then I've got this cute little stitch marker by Chapel View Crafts. A little um cinnamon bun so this is one i'm going to be picking up very shortly because i don't want this um i don't want this to languish any longer and i think it'll be a really really lovely christmas present so this is going to happen soon and you know between this and the garter stitch baby jumper these are all whips that i've picked up that i've started ages ago maybe like a year ago more than a year ago and you finish them so quick because they're almost finished like and it's quite lovely to just clean out the whip inventory a little bit and get the satisfaction of finishing things kind of quickly and because you're making progress you think yeah i can also work on some slower things which is what i've been doing and also what i plan to do next along with finishing all my whips so the next work in progress, I want to, I want to talk to you about my swatches. <laughs> I have a lot of swatches here. Um, yeah, I'll talk about these two first. These two I'll talk about later. I would like to cast on the, a pattern by My Favourite Things Knitwear called Sweater Number 18, I think it is. And it has a beautiful, beautiful texture. 
I think it was maybe last year or the year before, one of my lovely customers sent me a swatch she had made holding the Causeway yarn and my natural sock yarn together to make a kind of iron weight yarn. And ever since then, I've been wanting to make something with those held together. She had similar colors, not exactly the same. And it was a very subtle marl and it looked amazing. And um, because the Causeway yarn is wool and spun, the swatch had all the airiness of a wool and spun yarn, but then a slightly bit more of the drape of the worsted spun yarn. And I just loved the combination. So I thought this would be perfect for this pattern. I think it calls for iron weight. So um, I did my swatch. Again, I had to go down a needle size because I'm a very loose knitter. So um, I started off with a five and then I went down to a four and uh, blocked out the swatch and it was perfect for um, the stitches per 10 centimeters. So actually, I'm just gonna grab something quickly. Be right back. Yeah, so I really like swatching, so. <laughs> so the first swatch I made for this jumper was a mixture of the Causeway yarn, which will be coming back into the shop in the next month or two. It's a mix of Tees Water and Oxford Down. Absolutely stunning. Really, really nice to work with, wool and spun. And the Candlelit Banquet, which is um, a kind of speckled colour, I guess you call it on my natural sock base. Um, so holding both of these together, you'd think the contrast was gonna be huge, but actually you get this. Really interesting fabric, quite subtle, but you can kind of see the colors there. Oops. And that's a mix of these two, because I knew I wanted to go for something kind of neutral. Um, I wasn't sure what, but these two colours go together so nicely. Like, look at that. So, did it, was really quite pleased with it. But then the more I thought about it, I thought, would I wear a jumper in this colour? The answer was probably yes. Then I looked at my wardrobe and was like, would this go with the rest of my clothes? And I was like, I don't think it does. And I asked my sister-in-law, who is my knitting buddy, and she was like, mm, I don't think that's right for your wardrobe. And she was so right. So then <laughs> I held together the Causeway yarn and I dyed myself up a special color <laughs> of the natural sock. It's very neutral, very low key, and just quite subtle. And I was like, oh, I wonder what this combination is going to be like. So I knitted another swatch and it kind of came out almost like an oatmeal with a hint, the smallest hint of very, very, very pale, slightly pinkish tone. I would say it has a pinkish tone. And if you look carefully, I don't know if this will pick up on camera, but you can see a very, very subtle marl. You probably wouldn't see it if you look far away, but if you look up really close at the fabric, you can see a very subtle marl, which is really, really beautiful. So I decided to use this combination for my sweater number 18. Um, it's a similar-ish color to the original pattern. But yeah, I actually dyed up a lot of sort of variations. I'm just going to show you the difference in some of my very pale yarns. You maybe can't see it on my website, but so I just want to kind of show you. I have a lot of like off whites, which I actually think is very like wearable. You know, if you're doing a project like this or like a sweater project, sometimes it's nice to have that like neutral kind of piece that goes with all sorts of colors of like trousers. So it would go with like brown, black, grey, blue, all the colours. And yeah, sometimes you can't tell the difference. So here, I hope you can see this. So this is undyed natural sock. This is the kind of taupey, pebbly, neutral colour I dyed up. And this is my jasmine colourway. So if you're looking on the website, 
These two might look similar to Undyed, but actually they're very different. This one has definitely a more cool tone shoe. I think this would be amazing with the Causeway for this sweater. I just think this moral would be incredible. Um, it'll be so subtle, but I love the jasmine colorway. It's so luscious, like a cool toned white. Like I've kind of killed off like the creamy color of the the undyed, and it just creates it's a like I wouldn't even say it's like a light gray. It's like a it's an off white really, like a cool toned white. And this and this together would be so lush. I think. So if you want to knit one with me in the jasmine colorway, I want to see pictures because I think that moral would be so lush. So basically, I've spent a lot of time knitting swatches for this sweater. Basically, it should be really nice because I've spent quite a long time dyeing colours, deciding on colours. Here's my two swatches. And I think obviously this one, the pattern pops out way more which is nice when you, whenever you're doing a textured sweater. So I plan on casting that on this weekend. We're going away for a quiet holiday and I'm going to bring my knit in. I'm going to cast on my project. I'm going to knit, knit, knit. <laughs> Another work in progress. I not only knit swatches for um, projects that I'm going to cast on, I also knit swatches for potential yarns for the shop. And I have been swatching for a potential, well, I say it's potential, it's, it's actually coming to the shop next year in a really nice yarn. I'm not going to reveal the details yet, but I'll show you the swatches and tell you a little bit about it. So these are the swatches. I knitted them on two different size needles. This was with a five and this was with a three. I have to do one with a four to see what it looks like. But my, oh my, this fabric is stunning. It is from a native Irish breed. It is spun in Ireland. And that's all I'm going to tell you. I plan eventually on having two weights of it. But for the first launch, I'm going to have a sport weight. So I'm going to leave you with that. It's going to come out early next year. So... It's wool and spun. It's absolutely lush. I cannot wait to knit something in this. I can't wait to do some dyeing experiments on it. I just think it's going to be really nice. It's got really nice stitch definition. And yeah, so I spend a lot of time knitting swatches, but I actually really like knitting swatches. And I was thinking if I continue to knit these kind of slightly bigger swatches, what I could do is make like a little patchwork blanket with them all eventually when I have enough and I can just like knit them all together even though they're all different sizes you know you could do one like this and then you could do one like this and then you could do one like this but it is nice having swatches to show people as well what the different combinations are like so maybe I won't do that <laughs> so that's all my works in progress my dream projects or like I said before, I want to knit my little girl a matching hat so we can match this winter. That'll be so cute. I'm just going to grab my book here. Um, patterns that I have seen and liked are the Rollins, eh? You'll have seen that in my autumn inspiration video. I've dyed up all my yarn for it and then realised the pattern wasn't available as an individual pattern yet. I have no idea when it's coming out. I tried to message them to ask, no one replied, so I have no idea. So I've got my yarn ready. Um, it's actually in a yarn that I hope to release next autumn. So I've been swatching with that as well. Lots of swatches, people. Um, the Ronsley, I'm going to put a, a picture here. It's an all over colour work garment. And I would really, really like to start at this side of this year. But if that pattern's not released this year, I might consider another pattern all over colour work. But I'd really like to knit that one, so we'll see. Um, so that's one thing I'd like to start before Christmas, if it's possible, if the pattern comes out. The next dream project is, that's two so far. I'd like to knit a cardigan for my little girl called the Sorgan Fry Jacket Mini. And I would like to knit that in my hearth sock colourway or in my hard sock colorway, in my hard sock yarn, or 
my heart DK yarn. My head is gone in the Emerald Meadow Fall colorway. I really like to knit her that here. So I'll put a picture of that here. You can see what it looks like. Um, so far she has two or maybe three hand knitted jumpers that will fit her. I think two that will fit her this winter. Um, so if I knit one that will do this year and next year, I think that would be a good investment of my time. And I think it would be really fun to knit as well. Probably only takes one or two skeins. So that's the potential. Then I would like to knit a December bow. Has anyone like seen this pattern? I think it's been out for a while, but Petite Knit did a video where she put it in her hair and everyone, well, my sister-in-law was going wild. She was like texting me, telling me how we should all knit one and we should all match. And I was like, but yes, this has to happen. So I would like to knit a December bow for myself in white. I think, I'm not sure what white, I have a lot of whites. Maybe Jasmine held double. I don't know if it's DK weight or four ply. And another, I have a few here. Another thing I'd like to knit is um, a pattern by Albina called, I haven't looked up how to say this, but it's one year, one year. I don't know how you say it, but I'll put a picture here. She has re-released this pattern and I think the combination um, of the Causeway and the Natural Sock for that would actually be really, really nice. So that's a potential. Um, I'm not sure what colours, I haven't got that far because I've only seen this kind of recently or noticed it recently, but that is something that I would like to do. And probably later on in the more midwinter, I'm going to cast on a North Coast Kep which is a pattern by Sky Knits. It was in my quintessential countryside autumn inspiration video. This will require a bit of planning when it comes to yarns and colors. So I will probably do a lot of testing for that. Um, I don't want to just take skeins from the shop and use them. I'll probably, uh, I'll figure out some way to figure out what colors I want to go together for one of those. But I think that would look super cool. Like you need a super cool inventory of hats. And I'll put a picture of this one here. It's a, uh, I just think it would look really cool. So yes, one more thing I have, I'm, I'll not say acquisitions cause I didn't buy them, but they have come into my life. <laughs> via different people, <laughs> a couple of things. Um, I received this beautiful yarn from my other sister-in-law as a gift, which is probably one of the best gifts I've ever got from anyone. She was cycling um, on Eust and she went to the shop and she was borrowing my bike. So she got me a skein of yarn to say thank you. I think this is one of their newer new yarns maybe i got that wrong this is called kanach it's a, a four ply weight yarn it's um scotch merino and it's but it's this like light brown color which is so pretty i would like to knit a sophie scarf with this and also i'd like to crochet a little autumn mushroom and eventually when i have enough mushrooms i want to make a little garland with them so that would be really cute. Like, can you imagine a little mushroom with these colors? Wouldn't that be so cute? Anyway, this is the first acquisition that I didn't buy. <laughs> the second acquisition that I didn't buy was a little gift from Vanessa Palisa. I um, provided yarn support for a pattern for her called the Lizzie socks and she sent me she has made these little books with all um all the patterns for the literary sock society in them and I'll just get you a picture of the Lizzie socks and they're knitted in my house sock yarn which I have lots of in this update and she she very kindly sent me a, cop, a copy of the pattern book and this little tote bag which I am delighted with how cool is that? So um, 
Let me see the little person reading the book on it. And all the patterns are inspired by literary figures. So you can check out that if you're interested. Okay, shop stuff, shop stuff, shop stuff. I've already showed you quite a bit, but I'll just run through very quickly what will be in tonight's update. First of all, I'll start with the Hearth DK. You've seen the Emerald Meadow Fall. I'll also have a mustard. I'll have <clears throat> a personal favourite, Toasted Hazel. <coughs> Excuse me. Toasted Hazelnut. I think this would be really nice for the Sorghum Fry Jacket as well. I'm bringing restock and really roasted chestnut. I dyed up a reasonable amount of this, so if you want a sweater quantity, it should be available. Look at these autumn colours, people. I've also got Sprout, another greeny, tealy colour. Tabery, which is a restock from last month. And I also have Wildflower, but I didn't bring it dyed. <laughs> so these are the types of colours I'm going to have on the Hearth DK this month. Um, then we'll go on to Hearth Sock, which is good. I hold it double for socks. Also, I held it double for the Cutting Edge Vest by Albina. Emerald um, Isle, Emerald Isle. Um, then we have Wildflower Light. We have Really Roasted Chestnut. Mustard. This one is bright copper. The light green is fern and the dark mauvey color is peony mauve dark. So that's what these look like. I think these would actually be really good for the Stockholm hat. And then the three sock sets that I've already showed you will be coming this month. And one very special thing coming this month is these beautiful mugs by Laura Boyd Ceramics. She is a local to me ceramicist, very, very talented. She created this glaze especially for my shop this month. And doesn't it go with all my yarn so nicely? And also toasted hazelnut, like that's, that's a thing. That's the thing there. And I love the handle that she put on it. Such a nice, cool handle. And I would love to keep one of these for myself, but I feel like you might, you might, <laughs> you might sell me out of them. So I'd feel bad for keeping one for myself, but they're so pretty. Most of it's a matte glaze and then some little bits are um, a glossy glaze. I just love the combination. So very pretty. So that's everything I have to show you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I had a lot to talk about, even though I only podcast it a month ago, but that's because of all of my whips that I've picked up. And I don't know when the next episode will be. We'll see how my knitting goes, maybe in a month or two. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll, I'll put the shop update time here and the it. And I'll leave you with a little bit of B-roll of Rufus sleeping on the chair over here. And hopefully this fire gets going a bit better. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. Bye.